Hi hey everyone, in this tutorial we'll be making the texture for our uh, trail. I use it as a mask, so let me show you what it is. Um, so as you can see we've got this cast, and we're gonna have this trail, and we're gonna be creating that texture in substance. Let me isolate it, that, and let's play again so we can clearly see which trail we'll be working on. Okay, so that exactly what we're creating um, in substance and obviously in later videos we're gonna explore the uh, that smoke texture and uh, some other ones as well all right so i hope you're gonna enjoy this one let's jump into substance and let me actually show you it's gonna be this uh, texture Okay, so let me bring that noise here. Let's start with this one. I'm gonna reduce the amount on the Y axis. And next, I would like to maybe warp it a little bit. So I'm gonna get a multi-directional warp uh, grayscale. And for the input here, for the intensity, you can plug in pedaling noise. However, I'm just gonna create something similar. So let me grab maybe uh, cells. Uh, cells 4 and I can blur this and I'm going to get something similar to a pedaling noise however I can just reduce the blur and create a bit more sharper edges here okay so that will allow me to control it a little bit better if you need that sort of control okay so maybe somewhere around 7 for the uh, blur for the multi-directional warp grayscale intensity and next i'm gonna use a slope and for the slope i'm actually gonna go with the pedal and noise i'm gonna reduce its scale maybe to something like this ramp up the samples intensity obviously experiment with those i'm maybe gonna try min value just to create uh, a lot of breaks um, on that texture and next I'm just gonna get directional blur just to soften them maybe with a scale of 50 so as you can see this effect is all gone but we're getting a, a little bit softer lines uh, with this one and I'm just gonna grab that noise again and try to implement this into that uh, texture a little bit so in here, obviously we can get a copy and mix them together by dragging the scale maybe down here. Uh, you can try different options here. Maybe you wanna multiply, max or min, and all of those should work. So I'm just gonna go maybe with a copy and I'm gonna try to in introduce a little bit sharp lines from uh, that texture, okay? Uh, next, I'm gonna get another blend and I'm gonna get that texture uh, here because I want to just mask the center of it. So let me grab maybe a gradient uh, Linear 2. I'm gonna run it through histogram scan For the blend node that's gonna need to be multiply and now in histogram I can just decide how much of this I want this to be visible. I'm gonna increase the contrast slightly And I'm gonna plug this uh, maybe through the transform because I would like to move it slightly to the top like this and maybe shrink it even so we're gonna get this top highlight uh, on that texture so let me plug it here and change that to add however I don't like this uh, bottom tile there so I'm just gonna disable tiling for that uh, transform node in here, as you can see, we're getting this uh, highlight at the top, exactly what I want. And maybe you can reverse that even so you can control the, um, the grayscale of that um, background texture. So I think I'm just going to go with something like this. And now I'm going to create a couple gradients just to 
create a mask so I can use it in the engine for my trail. So I'm going to use a couple blends. It's going to be the first one and I'm going to get just a simple gradient linear. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees and that will be my multiply. So as you can see, we are eroding the back of that texture here. Might be a good idea to maybe disable tiling on that one. And maybe on that one as well, just in case if it's going to spill onto the edges. I'm going to get another blend. So I'm just going to duplicate this one. However, I'm going to get a slightly different gradient. The, uh, the one I can actually manipulate the axis of it. Okay. So in here, going to plug it here, preview it while selecting with a single click this gradient. And now I can decide what I would like to uh, erode from that gradient. So I'm just going to go maybe with something like this. So if you imagine you have a hammer or axe and maybe the top bit you want to be a bit longer in terms of trail. So you can just erode it using this sort of gradient. Okay, last bit, I would like to put a bit more highlights to the top. So let me get maybe a blend and I'm going to get another gradient like this. So I can just duplicate that one here. However, I can just add a linear rather than multiply. Select once this one. And now I could just add a little bit gradient to the top. Okay. So going to blend mode and obviously you can decide how much of this uh, you want. Uh, this could work, I think, but let's see if we can actually subtract the top. So maybe instead of adding the gradient to the top, because obviously we got already one here, maybe you would like to create a soft mask at the top. Okay, so let me soften it slightly. And to make this line straight, I think it might be a good idea to match the uh, value. So 0.9 here, 0.9 here as well. I'm going to zero that one and that one. And now I, you can just apply uh, values, uh, full values onto uh, those two. So I'm going to put maybe 0.1 here. And I think you have to do it manually anyway to make the straight line. So this is not as soft as I uh, want it, to be honest with you. Because I still think this is a very harsh line. So it might be a good idea to maybe abandon this and try something um, else. Okay. So once I have uh, this, I still need to get rid of that top bit because you can see I've got this highlight here. However, I really don't like this being uh, there. And maybe at the bottom we can do uh, the same effect actually. So let me try again. I'm going to get the blend node here. But this time let's try just a simple gradient like this. And what I'm going to do first, maybe multiply. So that should allow us to get rid of the uh, the bottom bit. For the bit more control, we can use histogram scan and increase its intensity. So we're only getting a little bit from the bottom like this. And then I'm going to copy that blend. Copy this bit as well. It goes to the top. And in here, instead of multiply, let's maybe have subtract and see if we can actually uh, get rid of the top bit. So I'm going to rotate it 180. So I kind of want this, but in reverse. I'm going to do maybe a inverse grayscale. Now go back to my uh, histogram scan and try to get rid of the top bit. So we're still getting this uh, very sharp and uh, 
But let's see if we can maybe roll with this. Okay, but we lost the bottom bit as well, I see. Oh, okay, because I did not plug that one there. Okay, cool. All right, so this is what we have so far. Obviously, this is a straight line. So let's see if we can actually uh, make it a bit more random. So I'm going to uh, run it through auto levels next. Just in case, just to normalize the values a little bit. Uh, next, I'm going to run it to another histogram scan and a transform. And I'm going to blend those two together. And now it's the histogram scan. I can just apply more glow onto this area. So I'm going to try max or maybe add. Now I can manipulate with the opacity how much of it I want. It might be a good idea to go back where we've added um, Uh, those two together and maybe increase this opacity slightly to maybe 0.8 so that should give us a bit more data uh, to add okay so as you can see we've got this highlight here which is gonna look good in the engine and more highlights along the edge as well all right so let me tidy this up a bit cool and finally let's do something with that edge. It will be very subtle, but let's see if we can actually make it a little bit more irregular. So I'm gonna get, I'm gonna try a Voronoi maybe. Okay, I'm gonna change the scale of it slightly, or rather stretch it like this. I'm gonna invert the grayscale. I'm gonna run it through histogram scan just to increase uh, the white values and to create a little bit more irregular shapes I'm gonna use warp with the pedaling noise obviously the scale of the pedaling noise is way too much so just a little bit so I can get a wavy texture with this I'm gonna blend it with one of the gradients so I can isolate it that axial gradient here and I'm gonna multiply it that texture so in here I don't want to affect any of uh, the corner of that texture I've got however I'd like to maybe uh, put a little bit of that erosion towards the end okay so now we've got this mask I'm gonna blend those two together and that one needs to go to the top because I want to control it and in here I'm gonna set it to subtract as you can see, we are getting a little bit more irregular lines, but might be a good idea to go to that gradient now and just to control it. I need to maybe increase the scale of that Voronoi to introduce a little bit more irregular shapes. I'm going to play with the histogram scan as well. So that line is uh, not fully straight. Cool. So I'm just going to keep it as it is. I'm going to test it how it might look with the colors now. So gradient. Uh, whoops. Gradient map. I'm going to add some color here. Just to see how it behaves. Okay. And maybe here at the back, I'm add slightly reddish color. I think that might look pretty cool. However, when the hammer or axe will be hitting the surface, we're going to get this straight line on our ribbon. Now, let's see if we can maybe invert that. So I'm going to move it slightly. So I'm going to use a transform. Oops. Let me try again. Let's squish it slightly like this. And next, maybe I'm going to get a, another transform. Or let's maybe rather get from this one. I'm going to mirror it. So mirror grayscale. And now with that transfer, I'm just going to squish it slightly like this. 
is going to give us this uh, grayscale. I'm going to move it slightly back and squish it even further. So I could get just this strip of it. I need to get rid of that part, so I'm just going to blend this with uh, maybe gradient. Or maybe shape, I think shape might be better. Uh, so let me grab shape. Plug it here, that will be multiply. And with the shape maybe I could get rid of this here. And use the transform to move it. Perfect. Finally, I'm just going to add transform to that one so I can move it to the edge like this. And I'm going to try to blend those two together now. I'm going to set it to add. And I'm going to grab this transform tool and just move it slightly closer. I'm going to zoom in just to make sure it blends in nicely. Press space. So we still got this uh, line there. gonna zero that value here maybe put uh, zero nine and let's see if you can I can apply some directional blur to it just to smooth this out we've got this line a little bit here so maybe might be a good idea to maybe apply a bit more intensity to blur it out I think it's going to go out a little bit outside here because I see I can see this straight uh, edge here. So move it back, grab that one, move it manually back. And I think something like this might uh, work for uh, for our mask on that tr uh, trail. At least it worked for me because this is what I did exactly. Now you can add maybe highlight. A little bit along the edge here if you want however I would suggest to put it into the engine first and see how that one uh, looks in the engine obviously now you have this you can apply uh, various warps in there if you want just to uh, maybe get rid of some of the straight edges however I'm gonna use this only as a mask because I'll be displaying a slightly different texture on that mask to create that trail Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this one. Slightly long tutorial uh, for something that should be fairly easy. Uh, but maybe you uh, found a couple notes in this tutorial that you can actually implement into your workflow. Alright, thank you so much and see you in the next one.